So, we will continue with the specific class. The end of the line voltage support to prevent the voltage instability. In the last class, uh, we discussed about what is mean by voltage stability and what is mean by voltage instability, what the causes of voltage instability. So, so many things we have discussed in the last class. In that, we observe that in case of inductive load, voltage stability decreases, inductive load voltage stability decreases, in the capacitive load, voltage stability increases. That is the final conclusion from this stability concept which have already discussed in the previous section. Now, with the help of these compensation devices, how the voltage stability can be achieved. That means, in order, that means voltage stability achievement, that is voltage instability that means to achieve the voltage stability that means to prevent the voltage instability uh, we are inserting one voltage compensation device is near to the wire compensator near to the sorry near to the load so here the end of the line voltage support is very helpful for uh, in case of radial line system in case of radial line system the receiving end voltage are very less uh, so many disturbances are occurring at the receiving end side. That's why we are connecting the one compensation device or wire compensation device or shunt compensation device nearly the near to the load. This is nothing but here wire compensator. That is a, our in our topic that is nothing but reactive power compensation device. You know that the reactive power Q is equal to uh, the units of reactive power is KVR or VAR. That's why the reactive power compensation as a name is the Wire compensator. Here we are using the shunt compensation devices uh, to mitigate the voltage drops uh, in the loads. Otherwise, uh, voltage drops reduce the wire compensator devices and we chest them. So, uh, here while we are connecting the voltage compensation devices, it supports the reactive power, therefore, it, uh, it teaches the demand of the load. For example, the QD is the, the reactive power demand of the load and QS is the reactive power supplied by the source and the source is the supply is the reactive power QS and the demand and the reactive power load covers the demand in the demand. That is the reactive power demand of the load is QD and supplied uh, that means reactive power source which is from the supply source is QS and uh, QR is the reactive power. QR is the reactive power required from the wire compensators. From the wire compensator. Otherwise, wire compensator can output reactive power in QR. For example, here the demand of the reactive power is, for example, I am the lower. That is here, Z is the sum level. I am the lower, for example. I am the consumer of the load. So, if the demand of the load is, for example, for sake of simplicity, I required 4 VAR, 4 VAR, I required demand of the load is, and the load cause demand of the 4 VAR, but uh, the Q supplied from the sources, but it generations, from generation side, the available uh, reactor power is, for example, 3 VAR only, demand we required 4 VAR, from the generation side we required only 3 VAR, so how much uh, is a deviation from 4 to 3, only 1, by the 4 minus 3, 1. That means we have to supply one VAR additional supply along with the source. Already generation is the supply to part to dumb later into which we have to power to part additional work equipment come which is one VAR supply test the man covers in a load covers in demand and the meet out and the 3 and a supply test which is not sufficient to drive the load. Therefore, we require a one one. A reactive power that is 3 plus 1, 1 VR, therefore 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, that means Q demand is equal to uh, QC plus QR, that is uh, QS plus QR, QS is the 3 and the Q uh, required or Q supplied by the rea reactive power combination that is 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, therefore Q demand is already 4, therefore 4 is equal to 4, that is the, that is the importance of this reactive power combination. So while compensating this, uh, while uh, providing this reactive power which indirectly supports the voltage. That's why in this anti-compensation device it supports the voltage at the receiving end 
while uh, providing the reactive power. This is the importance of this reactive power compensators. If in this, the reactive power compensation device, it may be variable impedance type, that is, it may be inductance type, it may be capacitance. While capacitance, the stability increases, while the inductance stability will be decreases. This is the problem in the variable impedance uh, oh, type of uh, compensation devices which is used in this receiving end side at the end of the radial transmission line. And the radial transmission line though, and the ending point though, where compensator will be. A vein compensator variable impedance type and it may be inductance in touch or capacitance in touch. Manako purpose based chase for inductance can be capacitance can be good chest. So in this way the way uh, shunt compensation devices which can improve the uh, that means it will provide the wear reactive power then it will improve the voltage profile of the system. Voltage profile of the system. For example, uh, in the last class we discussed about without any these compensation devices we discussed the uh, the system and also P versus V curve. But in this uh, class we discuss about uh, while connecting the shunt compensatory dividers what happened to the P versus V curve. Now observe the P versus V curve of the uh, this particular system while connecting the shunt component dividers. This is the load power that means whenever the load increases and uh, the voltage drop will be decreases up to some certain critical point only. After that the voltage will be decreases a very faster rate. The same happened at, at, at this power factor, for example, 0.85 lagging, and this is the 0.95 lagging. This is the unity power factor. This is 0.97 leading, and this is 0.9 leading. Depending upon the power factor, the voltage uh, will be changes with respect to load also. That means load and power factor, which will decide the voltage profile of the system. Uh, so here, one thing you can clearly observe that in case of the uh, without compensation dividers. Uh, while the same system without any compensation device, while increasing the load the voltage will be decreases up to critical point after that the after critical point voltage gradually uh, voltage decreases very faster rate right? after critical point voltage increases very faster but here in this diagram you can observe that uh, the, the, cat, uh, the curve shape is, is similar to the uncompensation devices but here in compensation devices uh, what happened is while decrease, increasing the load, voltage is not a decreasing very fast rate, it maintains the constant voltage at the rate of 1.0 per unit. That is the importance of compensation. Without any compensation devices, the load, while increasing the load at a particular power factor, voltage decreases. But in while with the help of these compensatory devices, we are maintaining the voltage 1 per unit. That is the difference between uncompensation devices and compensation devices. That means while we are connecting the shunt. This is the advantage. That means, irrespective of the load, we are always maintaining the constant voltage provided to the load. This is the that way it maintain indirectly it maintains the constant bus uh, constant voltage as the buses. This is the advantages of uh, uh, shunt compound dividers to prevent the voltage instability. Okay, so we will continue the next topic in the upcoming section.